hello guys and welcome to my channel uh, so today i'm going to introduce this mpesa course that i've been working on um so i've been doing integration for quite some time and from the first time i posted a video on, on youtube i've been getting a lot of questions uh, a lot of uh, uh, people calling me maybe to inquire about the problem they are going through when doing the integration um, and so uh, with all that uh, com combined, I've come up with this course, um, uh, putting all those things into consideration, uh, all those uh, maybe uh, the questions and everything, the problem that people go through when doing the integration. So in this course, uh, we are going to cover, uh, we are going to start from the time when you are looking for a till or a pay bill, and I take you through the types of a pay bill or till and how to apply for them and uh, the, which ones work with the API and which ones do not. And once we are done with that, we now go to the developer's portal, uh, where we look at how you can create the Safaricom developer's portal to, to getting the test credentials, the consumer can consumer secrets, uh, secrets. And once that is done, we now start the process of integration, which I do it in a very professional manner where we start uh, we don't you know when you are doing a youtube video you don't have uh, to go into de some details so you just have to focus on the concept so there are a lot of things that we leave out like uh, the maybe good coding practices and stuff like that but then in this course we consider those uh, so we are not going to write the code on the, con on the controller but we are going to write an impressive service which will be calling every time we want to handle a certain action okay so what are we going to cover in this course so if you go to the course and look at the curriculum we have the introduction we have the price steps and then we have the um, safaricom developers portal and i take you through installing the the software that you're going to use which is zamp and then once we are done with that we go to the project setup because this is going to be a practical course we are going to practically work on the project and that project is this just a demo site e-commerce some form of e-commerce site where we now well, we, we start from uh, creating the checkout form and um we, after creating the checkout form we we now integrate and pizza from the that point where somebody has given the phone number and now uh, wants to check out and pay with the pesa all right so and that is uh, the project setup that will be setting up that project we are not going to develop that project from scratch but we're just going to set up it up because i it is one of the projects i was just doing as a test up when i was just getting started with laravel so we have the, this setting up the application and then getting the test credentials you have adding the checkout form, working on Mpesa tables. So you have two Mpesa tables, which are um, one we have the the Mpesa payments table, and you also have the Mpesa transactions table, uh, which are going to work this way. So once an a transaction has been initialized and has sent um a, a, has sent that pop up to the user's phone, we save that as a new transaction but with the status of uh, zero meaning that it is pending or has not been paid and then when now we receive that data to the callback the url we get that data and save it into the payments table and then update the update the that transaction table with the status uh, of one meaning that that payment has been completed so that is what is on the mpesa uh, tables and then so we will go to working on impressor tables and um, services so we work on creating a better service um, writing SDK push method working on the dynamic parameters formatting the input data so of course you know that the phone number has to be formatted and uh, other things so we, uh, we, we need to format that data before send it to um, to, to impressor so yeah, SDK push initialization functionality, SDK push continuation, storing the SDK push request data, error handling, fixing. We also use the query. As you can see, when I'll show you right now that when we initialize, we get that pop-up and where the query is basically communicating 
with the server. And then I finally work on handling the callback data. So this is where now we get the callback data and now we need to process it and save it to the database. So let me just show you, uh, let, let me show you the, the, that demo application. So the first thing you'll have to log in using this test user that I've created or you can register as a new user. So that is test and the password is just password. And then you, you log in. So once you log in, it takes you to the home page of the application where we have uh, products. And let me say I've created this one for testing. And put in mind that if you come to this website to test, it's going to deduct your one shilling and this will not be refunded to you. So <laughs> I'm just doing this for demo. Right. So let me just click on add to cards. And then uh, the reason why it will not be returned is that I'm, I'm not using test credentials. I'm using the real credentials, right? So before you come here to test, you should be uh, informed of that, that whatever money will be transacting here will not be refunded to you. Uh, so we should be aware of that before testing. I just use the test, uh, the real credentials because using test credentials has uh, issues. So basically, I did this one shilling for testing. So I just click on checkout. And once I click on the checkout, you can see you have this pop up here and press the checkout. And I'm required to enter the phone number. Um, but before I click on checkout, let's go and check because this application is live. Let's go and check the tables the, that database. So I'm saving, I'm saving the data in this database here. And you see, you have those two important tables. We have these are the Mpesa tables that I talked talked about. We have the Mpesa transactions. We have the Mpesa transactions here, and then you also have the Mpesa payments. So once STK push is initialized, we'll be creating a new transaction with the merchant request ID and the checkout request ID, but with the status of zero. So let me just do this. I'm going to click here and once I get the pop-up, I'm going to go back and refresh and we should be having another transaction. Right now we have six transactions, but once we get SDK push, we should be having seven transactions. So let me click on checkout. I've got that and I refresh. And now we have seven, but this one has status of zero. So I have that pop up and I'm going to pay it. I'm going to just enter the pin to, in, to authorize the transaction. Now I have authorized the transaction and I've already received that payment method. But before I show you that, let me just show you a few things. You can see that this last transaction here, right now the status is zero. Right, the status is zero because once that transaction is created, we have not paid until the user pays. That is when we change that transaction to one so that uh, we can now know that the, the, the transaction has been completed. And there are also two things that we save here, which is the merchant request ID and checkout request ID. These are unique identifiers of every transaction, right? They are unique identifiers of every transaction. So instead of using the phone as the identifier, you can easily use the merchant request ID and the checkout request ID. All right. So you can see now we have that transaction and I've paid. So if I refresh here again, I ha I love to go back to the Mpesa payments table and check. But then if we have that payment that has come in, uh, this status should automatically be changed to one. In implying that that transaction has been completed. So let me just read the code. The code that I've gotten after paying is uh, RE67TYW9HV. Okay, so that is the transaction code. So if we go to the M-Pesa payments table and we get that, and you, ha you see we have it here now, 
It is here meaning that that payment has been received and it has been recorded here. And since we have this, the status of the transaction should also be changed to 1. So if we go to back to the Mpesa transactions, you should get that. You should find out that that transaction has been, the status has been updated to 1, meaning that the payment has been completed. As you can see now here, the status is 1. So this status is automatically changed. Once we initialize the transaction, the status is 0 because the, the user has not paid. If the user does not enter the PIN, the status will remain one which will remain zero but if they enter the pin the status will be updated to one to imply that they, the user has paid right so you can the, whatever you do this data is upon you this is just um just uh, this table is not a must to create two tables but it's important you track that transaction so that you, you know if the user paid or did not paid and that, having the records you can have them and having those records you can maybe display the transactions with the status. Maybe this one has been paid and this one is pending. Okay. Yeah. So basically that is it. And now we can see we start from the very best beginning. From the very beginning of Mpesa integration to from the very beginning of Mpesa transaction. To, so we can see we start from the very beginning of Mpesa integration to, to the point where you get that data and save it to the database. So basically that is what we are going to cover in this course in details. And it is around five hours. You can see five hours talking about M-Pesa. Now, this course here, right now it has been uh, it has been it has been given this by Udemy. Um, but then I'll be leaving two promo links. So because Udemy allows us to create a few promo links per month, so I have two promo links. The first one will be if you buy within Within five days, uh, the next five days, it is going to be nine dollars. But then, if uh, because that is the, the that is the promo code, I will have the wish to allow that one to be there forever so that you can get it cheaply. But the Udemy uh, Udemy can also uh, Udemy only allows you five days for nine dollars promo, and we have another promo that goes for thirty days, which is uh, now twelve dollars so make sure you use the the links in the description below in case you are interested in the course so thank you so much and um, in case you are interested in the course you can subscribe to the course you can subscribe to the course and learn more on mpesa integration so this course i wrote it in php laravel framework but then i did the explanation in a way that even if you are using another language or framework will be able to follow along. So thank you so much.